Hello again. Hey, Fire Get Mark here. How are you? Um, I'm here today trying to finish up the video series that I've been doing on Deer Creek carving from beginning to end. Um, we're going to wrap it up today. I'm not as far in the stone as I might go further, but uh, one of the things that I've shown in previous videos is I'm not afraid to go further if I see the need for that. Um, even after I'm done polishing, I have no problem with that. Um, but I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for sanding and polishing today. And I think those are crucial because there's a lot of people that get to this point where they've got the stone, but they just can't seem to get that right polish on there. Um, there's a lot of keys to it. I like to keep the stone clean. I use a toothbrush that I've dedicated to the fire agate. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that when I use little Dawn dish soap or whatever I use, um, I'm getting in there and trying to get all the rock dust out. Because during each step of the process, if you're carrying rock dust with you, it's going to cause little uh, micro abrasions on your stone. And instead of cleaning it up and sanding it, you're going to keep scuffing it and scratching it as you go. So... Um, Let's see, we have a few things to cover. I just want to say thanks again to everybody who's taken the time to click like and click subscribe. I'm so grateful to you, and I hope to keep bringing you more content and more informative videos. Um, I'm really excited. I met this really amazing girl, and uh, it's... Yeah... It's my uh, golden maiden, Amber J, and I'm really excited because she's a fantastic gold miner. She can do the smelting, uh, shaker table, she's got it down. So I actually fell in love with somebody that's um, deeply into rocks and minerals too. So I'm excited. Let's We can maybe do some videos together in the future. Let's see about that. Anyway, I'm going to get back to this Deer Creek. And uh, in this video, I think we're going to be able to wrap it up, um, at least get to the point where I can show you the polish, uh, because really that is the essence of the stone. Once you've got it polished, then you just, you're sanding the edges and the bottom. You always work on the top first. You want to make sure that um, you've positioned the color to exactly where it has to be, so you know if you want one side higher than the other on the bottom. And again, we're doing this this angle, this bevel, that's uh, slightly canted down and outward. So if someone's wrapping silver in, it can hold the stone in place. Alrighty. So let's see. Um, what am I going to use? I know exactly what I'm going to use. I'm going to use some diathin wheels that I have. Uh, diathin is a high-end professional tool. Uh, created by VH Technologies, and right now they're doing a special for th diathin discs. So if you buy the set of um, four, then they throw in a fifth wheel for free. Um, they're used with light pressure, uh, nice, gentle, even, steady pressure, and I'm going to show you all of that, and they're run completely dry. So I've dried my stone, I've cleaned my stone, Got it all prepared to where I want it to be, and, uh, oh, look at that. <laughs> Let's talk about another aspect of fire agate carving. Hang on, let me flip the camera around. All right, so here's the Deer Creek stone as it lays, and, uh, it's got some rough edges and the bottom. So this was a windowed stone that I'd picked out. And I decided I was going to carve into. Um, I think there's a healed natural fracture in there. But I hadn't candled the stone recently. So let's try that. Now when I say candling the stone. You see this is a light bulb. Uh, I have a, a bright backlight. And I have the stone. And I could hold the stone in front of it. See that dead zone in the hole right over here? That means if there's surface color, it's just going to be kind of ghosty. It'll never be really true, really dark. And that may go through to nothing right there. Ideally, 
I should draw it out and be prepared to trim that piece out and then just reshape the stone maybe to more of a diamond shape or something like a teardrop, something that's aesthetically pleasing. So we'll see what happens when we start sanding and polishing. But this is candling the stone. Okie doke. So this stone could be finished a couple different ways. Um, I could use sandpaper. I'd start with an 80 grit. Uh, I like to use the 3M wet dry sandpaper. And I could sand it and I could even use a dowel or a piece of rubber to back it so I could get a nice even surface. Um, that little fracture. See, I was going to salvage the most, as much of the stone as possible to try to bring out that little hint of blue on the back. I was thinking about polishing it, that way it could be a two-sided stone. Um, but this was just, this was out of a discount pile. It just happened to see that flash of blue, so. All right. This can be done, like I said, with sandpaper. It could be done with Nova wheels or Nova points. A lot of my previous videos have done that. And just in this one, I happen to want to be showing off these diathin discs because they are so fast and so effective. Um, for the professional carver, these are pretty indispensable. They're more expensive, but if you use gentle pressure, keep your stone completely dry, they last quite a while. Um, I'm only using a uh, uh, half pound of pressure at the most. It's basically the weight of the wheel, maybe less than the weight of the, the wheel and handle. Um, and I'm just guiding it to make sure I get that nice even cut because it's impregnated with diamonds, so it does do some cutting. This is a... Uh, these are pretty amazing bits. All right, without any further ado, let's kind of see what happens. Oh, and at this point, please, please, please make sure you're wearing a mask. Make sure you're wearing eye protection. Make sure if you have an air filter, you have this running. You do not want to be breathing the silica dust and you want to make sure you clean off your surface when you're done. Uh, wipe it down, get rid of that silica sand and mud because when it dries, then the dust can become airborne. And uh, silica dust leads to silicosis in many cases which can be extremely dangerous. So be careful and enjoy uh, your hobby and let's get to this. Um, oh, and at this point I would be wearing magnifying visor, which I'm putting on now. And I would probably be working about six to eight inches away from the stone. All right, sorry, it's gonna get a little bit loud. I'm gonna be carving at, uh, let's see, maybe five to six, 7,000 RPMs with a half ounce of pressure varying. So what we're doing when we sand is we get rid of any tool marks and we start to blend the stone to make it more receptive for polish. I understand if you're in a pinch, you feel the tendency to add more pressure or push too hard. That's definitely not what you want to be doing. Make sure you maintain gradual, easy, gentle pressure, steady as possible.
Don't get caught up in one spot for too long. And you see I can use this at an angle. Use the underside of that pad. These are extremely effective tools. I've done the same thing with basic rubberized abrasive bits, but it takes much longer. And since they're having a sale, I figured I would help promote them because it's saved me a lot of time and wear and tear on my hands. And that's what I've realized. You can do it with cheaper tools and figure out whether or not it's right for you. But if you decide that you really enjoy carving and you enjoy this art form, you want to spend some money on good tools that are going to keep your hands, you know, happy. All right, let's give this a little brush. Zoom in a little bit. There we go. So, with the course, there's still some spots that I haven't accessed yet. The nice thing about these, um, one of the nice things, one of the many nice things about the diathin is that you can wear them down to the very end. They last all the way down, so this one is still working, and the smaller ones are nice to get into those tight spaces. I love these quick release handles, it sure makes it a time saver. Again, if you can save some time, it makes it more fun in the long run. See, there's a little tool mark here and there. There's a minor scratch. Sorry for that. Uh, let's see. So I'll change the position of the stone. Make sure you feel free to rotate it as needed. So I can come in here. the stone I'll be right back so thanks to that diathin wheel and that was the course it's helped us to 
blend a lot of those little tool marks that were there. So now I'm going to come in with the fine and I'm going to touch it up. And luckily I have another fine that's worn out so I can get into the smaller areas. So, let's see. Again, a nice, gentle, light touch. Don't rush. Take your time. I like to sometimes pick a pattern and I'll go in a clockwise motion then sometimes go counterclockwise to touch it up. Don't be afraid to rotate the stone if you see these little ridges. This is a good time to blend them. Yeah, these things are just so fast and effective. Um, again, you could do, you can get the same finish with sandpaper or Nova points or rubberized abrasives or uh, bamboo chopsticks and, and paste polish. But these just happen to be a lot more effective and uh, quick and effective uh, without wearing out my hands as much. Whoops. Sorry, I got off camera for a bit. Again, using a 10X visor, and these are available at Harbor Freight for about $6. Or you can get a high-end one.
I like to use that gentle angle when possible because if you hold it up and down and rest on any one area too long it will cut into the stone Sorry, my hands are dry. Comes from washing them too frequently. Well, frequently. Alrighty. Let's see. Zoom out. Brush a little more. still have some little tool marks in here there well all over it needs a little more sanding so let's see I'm gonna switch over to let me see let me see okay um, this is the tail end of a Diaflex. So, also from VH Technologies, they have Diathin and Diaflex. Here's the difference in the wheel size. Um, also rubberized material embedded with diamonds. So, um, great cutting. Alright, switch this out. Um, forgive me. All right, let's see. Alright, so don't be afraid to switch. I switched again to a nice super coarse one. And I have to focus on the stone, so hopefully I don't get out of focus on the camera.
Like I said, don't be afraid to go a little further. Yeah, I think that better prepared the stone. We'll switch out the coarse, or super coarse, for the regular coarse. So that rapid brushing helps keep from resting in one space for too long. I'll be sure to put the link for VH Technologies in here. Um, if you enter soon, they're doing a, a, a giveaway that you really want to take advantage of, besides just getting the free, the, uh, free wheel. Uh, I'll post a link to explain more here. Yeah, that's looking much better. All right, I'm going to switch to the thin. All right. 
I'm going to go wash that off, and then I'm going to clean up my area and wash my hands. And I think I'm going to lay down the first layer of polish. We'll see. Alright, I decided to go with some diamond um, super polish. This is 1200 grit. I, uh, I tend to add, here we see, a little dollop of um, uh, petroleum jelly, or, you know, like Vaseline. Something to keep it cool and lubed on the stone, and it helps me to load the brush, basically, to charge the um, <clears throat> to charge the wheel with polish. Make sure you keep the cap on, you don't want to contaminate your polish. Oh, just for future reference, another thing you can use is a dop stick, a section of dowel that's cut flat, and uh, you can either glue it on or wax it on um, while you're working on the piece so it doesn't fly away. This one I'm just going to hold by hand. <laughs> Again, very light pressure. Uh, I can increase my speed as the polish gets finer. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and wash that stone off. I'll be right back. Alright, now that I've washed the stone, took a little Vaseline and paste, well, well petroleum jelly and some of the 14,000 diamond paste super polish. Make sure I charge my... I like to use a soft bristle, um, preferably a long horsehair brush. Uh, but it has to be really soft. that up. And I've washed everything. I've washed my hands. I've washed the surface. When I increase to the higher speeds, I uh, really lighten up the pressure. I might only be using three to four ounces of pressure at this point. This is why dopping it is such a good idea. All right, well. I'm just going to glue it onto a dowel really quick. I'll, I'll be right back. 
All right, so I just used a little bit of super glue and the section of dowel or dop stick, and it'll help me grip the stone a lot easier. All right, it's coming together. Let's see. And uh, I'm just going to continue applying a few more layers of the same exact polish the same way I'm doing it, uh, and just washing the stone in between. And gradually, the rest of these little blemishes are going to wear out.
<clears throat> occasionally I'll touch the stone just to make sure that it's not getting hot. I want to keep the stone cool and I want to keep it lubricated which is why I use the petroleum jelly so that the um, polish doesn't bake on. Okie dokie. I'm going to go wash this off and I'll be right back. So this is the Diashine Polish. And you can go to diashinepolish.com And if you order the um, Die of Thin Wheels now and you enter the promo code MARK in caps, then you'll get an extra 10% off as well as be entered into their giveaway. So, I like to take this CompoFlex wheel and charge it with some of the polish. Really only takes the tiniest bit. Again, Diashine Polish. DiashinePolish.com Alright, let me wipe this off really quick. It's nice to have a microfiber cloth ready. That's much better. Alright. Well, there we have it. That's a... Uh, uh, I'm just going to continue working with the same wheel. There's also a thinner 
combo flex wheel that they make. They make them in different sizes. This one I like to use the um, diamond super polish on. This one I use uh, exclusively for the die shine polish. So I don't don't cross contaminate. Anyway, I'm going to continue to go over this, um, but that's beginning to end. Deer Creek windowed, windowed fire agate um, from what was the rough window to exposing a lot of these uh, pretty purples, some greens, there's a little blue, some orange, and all I do is continue to polish. Slow and steady wins the race. Don't rush yourself. But I know that this is already a very long video. So, for the sake of time, and since I need to get to bed, I'm going to call it quits. Say have a beautiful night, everybody. Please continue to like and subscribe. Watch Mark's Minerals videos. And Fire Agate Mark here. Let me know if you have any questions. You can always reach me at fireagatemark at gmail.com or mark.ruiz, R-U-I-Z, at, uh, I'm sorry, mark.ruiz.fireagate at gmail.com. And I'll put these in the links. Um, continue to clean your stone and move it around. Clean it up just like you're doing teeth, brush everywhere, clean, clean, clean. All right. I hope you have a wonderful evening and, uh, if you haven't already, please click, click subscribe and like, and uh, you'll see the future videos. Let me know if you have any questions, and have a wonderful evening. Thanks again.